family, in marriage or not, it is my private life. You know, I many parents and the husbands, wives, leaders of nations, leaders of communities, leaders of groups, and so on and so forth. You see, the, you hear them. You know, when they do shady things, when they do things that are below the standard of what they are doing, the standard of the office, men of men like us who are men of God, bishops, geos, I don't care, I don't know who. Now, when they do shady things, you know, you say, ah, why did the people ask, why did you do this? You're not supposed to do it because of who you are. He said, you say, shut up, it's my private life, not your business. And now, the question on the table today is, does a husband, because we are more concerned about families, we are more concerned about marriage, that's what God has called us, we we'll do what God has called us to do. Now, the question on the table is, does a husband, you know, have a private life that, that doesn't concern his wife, or like people say, that it's not her business? This man here, does he have a life, any life, that is not her business? We're going to know. Or... Those of us who are our kids there, do they have a private life like what have been going on in Saskatchewan for some few weeks right now? Do they have a private life that is that is that it's not my business or our business as their parents? You know, do we have a private life that is not their business? This is the question on ground today. Those of us who are leaders, you know, governors, senators, you know, presidents, prime ministers, do they have any private life that is that is not the business of their subjects? Those who are leading them, who they are leading those who they are following. I don't know what your answer may be, but if your answer is a yes, what is the extent? <laughs> We're going to know. Well, from this end, from this end, we are here today to prove to you from the word of God, by the, from the things the Lord himself has said, have known, by also divine revelations, which have granted us, that the life of a husband is never a private life. It is the business of his wife. You know, my baby girl, I've been crying for some few things that have been happening, you know. Those were the mistakes, the you know, things I failed to do before now. We didn't even though I've done that, but it's, it, 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 it didn't have so much by fire that she was, I've been weeping since yesterday. So, we might not tell you all, but if you are close, you can. But that's by the way. So, does a husband have a life that he can say, this is my private life. What I do is not none of your business. <laughs> That's what we are here today to explain to you from the word of God if that is correct. Remember, you have your opinion, you also have your own questions to ask if you have any at the end. Now, please take note of this if we must say from this beginning. If you actually want to have a private life, I think we've said it in a minute before, but today is the topic. If you actually want to have a private life, once you become an adult in Saskatchewan, where we're speaking to you from, for you to be an adult, you must be, you must you be able to make a decision for yourself. You must be up to 16 years. So let's use that. For you to say, I have a private life. I want to live a private life. Once you are 16, you're qualified to leave your parents' house. If you are living, please do not think about getting married. Please, do not think about taking any leadership position. Please, do not think about becoming a pastor. And so on and so forth. Don't, don't think about being a king. Why? Because whatever you do, both in the open, and whatever you do in the secret, what you do in your workplace, what you do in your school, those of us who are our kids listening, say, ah, daddy, you always, you, you have been too hard on us. Whatever you do at school, whatever I do at workplace, whatever she does, everything we do, like I just told you, has, is the business of the person you've gotten married to. Is the business of your parents, is the business of those who are leading you, and who, those whom you are leading. It's the person's business. Now, let's look at David for example, as an example here, as a father, and also as a leader. He committed an adultery with a woman in secret, but he claimed the life of two of his sons, or even three, if we must say, plus 
the life of one of his lieutenants, who happened to be the husband of that woman, in the open, not in the secret. That is, um, if you want to know what I'm talking about, that's in the book of um, First Second Samuel, chapter eleven, chapter eight, chapters eleven, eight, thirteen, and eighteen. He did it in the secret, but he came to the open to claim the life of those who weren't there when the thing happened. <laughs> That's how it works. Another thing, another example is when he decided to number the people of Israel, the children of Israel, as a king, he decided <laughs> to number them, which is contrary to God's word and God's instruction for Israel as at that time. In the book of Second Chron First Chronicles chapter 21, what happened? That claimed the life of about 70,000 Israel, innocent Israelites who weren't part of the decision, who weren't there when he made the decision because he was their leader. Now, as a follower, Achan, in the book of Joshua chapter 7, we might read it at the end as we're working with time. I saw something there that scared me in the book of Joshua. I would likely read it by God's grace. Achan made a decision to take one of their costings as a follower of, of Joshua, as a child, as a child of a, one of the children of Israel. That made Israel to fail before their enemy. And if you study there, anyway, should I just read because sometimes we need to read God's word. Let me just read, please. Just permit me before I come, come back. Joshua chapter 7. Achan took an accosting. But when God was talking to, his, to Joshua, God said, Israel took. So, is there actually a private life? Especially in the house of God, in the families of God. In marriages of God's people and every other marriage at all, every other nation at all, is there actually a private life? Now, let me read. But the children of Israel committed tres a tres trespass regarding their cause things. For Achan, now see, for Achan, not the whole Israel, Achan, one man, for Achan, the son of Kramni, took of the accursed things, so the anger of the Lord burned against the children of Israel. So, and <coughs> I'm just picking some verses. So, the Lord said to Joshua, Get up, because they fear before their enemies. Say, Get up, are you crying to me? Israel has sinned, and they have also transgressed my covenant, which I commanded them. For they have even taken some of the accursed things. And have both stolen and deceived, and they have also put it among their own stuff. Therefore, they could not stand before their enemies, but turn their backs before their enemies, because they have become doomed to destruction. Neither will I be with them again anymore, rather, unless you destroy the accursed from among you. Now, let me just pick a few things here. Achan, one man, took the accursed thing. God referred it as the problem of the whole, of his, the whole Israelites. God, because of it, said that the whole Israel is doomed for destruction. That is to say, if they did not retreat, they would have all been wiped out by a small nation. Number three is that God said, I wouldn't walk with you again. <laughs> now, God said that they, you have deceived and you have stolen because of what one person did. Now, the question I'm still dropping on the table is, is there still, is there still, is there still a, a private life by what we just heard now? One man sinned. Innocent people died. Now, let me read the second part of it from verse 24. It said, then Joshua then Joshua, this one is important to me, and it made me scared. It, it scared me, rather. Then Joshua and all Israel, with him, took a can, the silver, the garment, the wage of gold, his sons, 
his daughters, his oxen, his donkeys, his sheep, his tent, and all that he had. And they brought them to the valley of Akko. And Joshua said, why have you troubled us? The Lord will trouble you this day. So all Israel stoned them, stoned him with stones. They burned them with fire after they had stoned them with the stones. Now, my concern, where I'm reading it is, his children were not there when he did what he did. I'm sure they, probably they didn't know. His, his fine daughters, like mine, his, his one handsome sons, they, they weren't there. His wife was not there. Probably they didn't give the consent. But they had to die. Thank God for Jesus. I don't know who is hearing me. Thank God for Jesus. Those of us who came from Africa, I don't know where you're listening to me from. Thank God for Jesus. That in Christ, we can stand on the blood and even refuse some of the things our fathers did. But then look at this man. Look at this man. His innocent children have to die because of what he did. Just like some of us. I don't know who is hearing this message now. If you do not know Jesus, you need him now. Because if you, Jesus is the only one who by his blood can atone and remove you from whatever a father did. Because he connects you to the father in heaven. He connects you. I don't know who I'm ministering to, but the Holy Ghost have to move this way. He connects you to the heavenly father in heaven. Who now absorbs you, who removes you from whatever any father or mother have done, which actually should blame your life. I, whatever any leader has done, which actually should claim your life, Jesus is the one who can bring you out of it. After, aside that, if it's going to be a life matter, you are the person who will go down. Now, let's go back to what we are discussing in marriage. Now, do I, does, does, do I, does my wife or I, do I have any private life? My kids, do they have? Do you have any life that is a private life? Say, this is my private life. What I do is none of your business. No. Dear brothers and sisters, today, we want us to know that it doesn't matter how you see it. It doesn't matter from many perspectives we want to see it. Whatever we are doing, whether it's in the secret or in the open, whatever I do is the business of my wife. And whatever she does is my business. And like I said before, before I start tying up, as a child, you need to understand that whatever you do affects the other members of the family, wherever you did it. Because I've watched parents in the ministry who, who, who were broken hearted and some died because of what? The life, because of the mistakes and the misdoings of their kids. I've watched that happen. They became brokenhearted. Some of them had blood pressure. Some of them had issues because of the life. You see, in fact, if this will say, let's just say now, oh, that the life that this man and my, I'm living now doesn't have anything to do with my parents. Why is it called a family? What is a family? A family means that we are, we, this man, this woman, man, and the children, all of us are together. We are one. That's why it's a family. That's why it's called a family. The Bible says in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 12 concerning the body of Christ, say that we, being many, we are one body. For by one spirit have we all been baptized into one body. So, whatever she does, whatever I do, affects in the family and even in the church, it all affects. You see, we might not be too long, but let me repeat again. Whatever we do as kids, we must be careful with them. <coughs> I will still come up again by God's grace if I have all the time. But whatever we do as and whatever we do as husbands, whatever we do as wives, is the business of the other one. Why do I say that? And that's where I'm going to conclude this first one. If I have all the time, I can come up second again. In Matthew chapter 19, when Jesus was given the opportunity to comment on this matter for the first time, Jesus said. So, they are not, but baby can help me get it. He said, they were asking Jesus the, the question about divorce. 
Jesus used that opportunity to open our eyes to something that is very, very important. And we must know today. Jesus said in the book of Matthew, when they asked him, say, ah, is a man permitted to put his wife up or divorce his wife for any reason? Jesus said, have you not read? Don't you know that he that met them from, met them, met them to be one from the beginning? Male and female. Me, male, you made them male and female. And for this cause. For, for this cause. A man shall leave, father man shall leave his, mother, his father. And his, shall cleave to his wife. Yes. And they twin shall be one flesh. They shall become one flesh. Now the next verse says, so. Wherefore, so, they are no more two, they, they are no longer but two, one flesh. but one flesh. What therefore, so God, there, what therefore God has joined, joined together. together let no man. Man. Now, that's where I'm going to conclude this, my first teach this man. The question is, if you say that a husband and wife, that there's still a privacy, which one, where is the privacy? Is it the same two, two bodies, two, two, two people that have become one flesh? Are you the one? You know, we we'll quickly say this. We we'll quickly say this. You know, when somebody wants to divide you and your wife, you say, see, don't divide us so. Especially when there is problem, he say what God has joined together. Let no one put asunder. He say that we quickly shout it. What God has joined together. Now the same people who say God, what God has joined together, are the same ones who are saying it. This one is my private life. Which one is your private life? If God has joined two of you together, is it the same life? The question I'm going to ask, and that's the question I'm going to end with. Which life is now your private life? Is it the one that is now one flesh with her, or the one that is one flesh with him? Which one is now the private life? That you say this man, it's not my business. I can have a girlfriend, it's not your business. I can have a boyfriend, it's not your business. I can do anything, it's not your business. Whatever I do, it's not your business. Listen, take note of this. You are now in marriage, you are now one flesh. And if because we are now one flesh, there is no other second life that you are talking about, say it's my private life. The life is her life. In fact, this remaining the remaining of I do is once you say, once you go to the altar. He say, do you receive this one? Say, I do. What you're saying is that I'm now handing my life over to you. I don't have it alone. And in fact, one of the confessions we make, one of the vibes we make, say, I share my life with you. I share it with you. I share it with you. And that's why what is happening to her happens to me. I share the life with you. I stop here. There is no private life in the family. There's no private life in marriage. Those who are in Saskatchewan hearing us, those who are supporting this, there is no private life for a child. There is no private life for even a parent. As a parent, you don't have any different life. Whatever you are doing comes back on the kids. Whatever you are doing as a wife, the same. I stop here today. Okay. <laughs> there is no private life in marriage. It's a very good topic. That is not to say you are not going to have your privacy as a man and as a wife. It is different, you know? understand us especially for the young ones who are not into marriage it does not mean you cannot have your privacy when you get married he has his privacy i have my privacy if he doesn't have his privacy how can he commune with god he needs his time with god i need my own time i need my own time also with friends and he also needs his own time private time personal time with friends it is not the same what we are simply saying is that once i am married once i have, I am, I have resolved in my heart to get married i should be ready to kill this phrase is my private life because if i don't want to if i don't want to share everything about me with the man i, I am saying is going to be my husband then i am not fit to marry if i want to live my life and still keep some some things about my life hidden and then i, I can take any job leave any job go for any business trip without considering him then i am not ready so once a man gets married to a, a lady there is no there is not supposed to be any other private life it is now one life because what affects him should affect me, and what affects me should affect him. And if you are yet to go into marriage, it is, it is better for you to share your life, life's experiences with whom you want to get married to. Let him know who you are. Let him know what you, you stand for. This is what I believe in. This is my philosophy about life. Uh -huh. Then I, let him hear it. If he's not okay with my life as a person, then he should leave. He should go. You know, I don't need to keep any part of my life hidden. And then tomorrow he discovers it. He should know me, know who I am, where I'm coming from. Any, anything about my life that needs to be known, he should know. You know, when I read what Mark, what Jesus himself said in Mark 
4, 22, he says, for whatever is hidden is meant to be disclosed, and whatever is concealed is meant to be brought out in the open. I begin to ask myself. So what it means is that if I even decide to hide away some aspect of my life from him right now, what it means is that a day comes in life when he will discover. And when he discovers it, what happens to my relationship? How is he going to look at me? What happens to the love and the trust he has, you know, built for me for years? Because I decided to hide a, a certain part. I decided to say it's my private life. He shouldn't know about it. And I'm in marriage with him. He should know who I am. There's nothing, nothing about me should be hidden from him. He should know what turns me on and what doesn't turn me on. Your partner you want to go into a relationship should be able to know. Should be able to know you. Should be able to know this is what I'm doing now. I am jobless right now. There is no job. I am still believing. Don't create any impression that doesn't exist, you know. You, 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 you claim something that you're not because you want to hide a certain part of your life. You feel, I am not having a job. is my private life. She shouldn't know about it. Hey, she will say no. Or she will begin to look down on me. It shouldn't be. The person should know everything about you. You are yet in school. You, you've not been able to go to school. The person should know. There's nothing to hide. You know? I've come to discover the reasons. One of the reasons why people, you know, talk about is my private life. They don't want to share. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> You know, I know a lot of persons are afraid of being judged. Mm -hmm. Yes, you're afraid of being judged, even by your partner. And that's why you do some things in the office. You make some mistakes. You do some funny things outside, out there, during your business trip. You don't want to get her involved. But the thing is, even from where my beloved Red goes, the, the wife and the kids, the family of Akan, they were not there when he did what he did. Mm -hmm. But did it stop them from being punished? No. You know? So if I decide to hide it away from him, that is my private life. I want us to know that it does not stop them from suffering the consequences of my actions. That I decided to conceal it, made it my private life, and I didn't bring it up so that they would tell me, oh, daddy, you are wrong in this one. Mm -hmm. We shouldn't have done this. Mm -hmm. Your child yeah. can, can lead you into prayer. Yeah. Say, God, let's pray and ask God yeah. to show us mercy. Yeah. And then because you guys prayed as a family, God will hear. And th that's disaster that is waiting to happen. God will avert it and remove it because you guys have come to pray. And then we are a institution is in, import, important because you have told them you will go and make that institution. Else that you, you didn't do it will not stop them from suffering. Hmm. I want us to know that my is my private life is my private life. You remember that there are people out there who are going to suffer the consequences of that action you are taking right now or the ones you, are, you, have, already, you have taken already and the ones you are yet to take. There are people who will suffer. There are people who will suffer the, the consequences of that thing you're doing right now, that you're calling your private life. Mm. You're feeling that nobody should talk to you. Even your pastor can't even talk to you. Mm. You feel you're, you're too big, you're too wealthy, that nobody should even advise you. Yeah. That is your life. You can live it it's anyhow you like. Yeah. you like. I want you to know that there are people out there who are going to suffer heartbreaks, disappointments, who are going to be frustrated because of that, sem that singular yeah. action, yeah. that thing you're doing right now. So there is no private life when it comes to paying the price. Excepting you don't belong to a family, except you don't want to have one, then go on. Please don't get involved in any family matter. Don't get involved in getting a spouse and in, in having kids. Because these kids are innocent and definitely they are the ones who are going to suffer it. There are so many things that our parents did, you know, which they don't know has a way of one way or the other affecting our lives. Thank God for people who know God. If you don't know, if, if there are if they are the ones who don't have Christ in their life, who don't know God, what the blood of Jesus can do in their lives, mm. you know, they begin to suffer and suffer un, un, unnecessarily. And people have been struggling in life because of the sins of their parents, because it's my private life. Their parents won't even listen to anybody when they were being reprimanded. You know, how, what, how long shall we continue to live this kind of lifestyle that will be bringing innocent people into unjust suffering? I call it unjust suffering because definitely they are not supposed to be suffering. What I don't know about, I shouldn't be suffering for it. I, I shouldn't be suffering for what a decision of one man. That you decided to leave your family to relocate. They are telling you, don't go. He is say, saying, I can't stay without you. Only me can't cope with these kids. And you are saying, hey, you have to cope. Other men and other old ladies are doing it. Other women are doing it. Mm -hmm. And you know, you are beginning to compare her. Tell her that, why can't you do it? You, you should be strong. Uh -uh. Should I not take this business trip? And maybe the person is foreseeing danger. Yeah. You say, hey, that is my life. You can't rule my life. This is my private life we are talking about. 
After all, what, how am I taking care of you? How am I able to take care of you and the children? You're already asking questions. And then you go in that journey and you get hooked up. And then you decided to cover it. Something went, went uh, one thing led to another, mm -hmm. and it resulted into another family there. Yeah. And these ones they don't know mm. is my private life. They don't know about it. And then the person dies suddenly, mm. and of course begin to come from left and right. Mm. You've created problems for innocent people who shouldn't be part of it. So is my private life shouldn't be in marriage. It should not be what God has joined together. We your private life put asunder. Is my private life will it separate us? And not just that it will separate us, I will still have a way of suffering from it. My kids will still suffer innocently for it. It shouldn't be. We should rise up. Yes, they will judge us. People are quick at judging others. And because of that, you have concealed what you should even make open to your partner. Mm -hmm. And yet, you are still suffering. Because definitely, he that covereth his sins shall, shall not still prosper. prosper. Yeah. The word of God cannot be broken because of any man. God is not a respecter of presence. If you have egg, you have egg. You know? You know, you say confess your fault to one another. Confess your wrong, your, your weaknesses. Eh? When you have confessed to God, you, you have to come back to your partner. Because it is no longer your private life. She is involved. You sin though, not her, but she will suffer the consequences of that sin. Mm -hmm. So you have to come back, confess to her, and then both of you will go to God together. But when it is my private life, the person dies in it, the wife and the kids are still suffering, or the husband, they are still suffering as a result of what you have done. Hey, this is, this is, this is not, it's not going down well at all. And many persons don't even know why their lives have been that life of struggle, yeah. that life of pains, because of what somebody has done. done yeah. Let God help us. Because having a relationship is all about, being in a relationship is all about, I am no longer living my life, uh, my life alone. Mm -hmm. I am living, you know, we well, are living, living together. Yeah. We are living together. And if I love him, why it is my private life? I can't share anything with him. It's because I don't trust him. Mm. So that is another thing you people fear and make their lives private because they feel they don't trust their partner. Mm. You should be able to build trust in your relationship. You should be able to develop love because Bible says even perfect love casts out fear. Yeah. You are afraid of sharing. You are afraid of opening up. You are afraid of discussing your private life with your family. You are afraid of making it, bringing it home. You know, sharing with them. Let everybody know you, who you are mm -hmm. outside and, and not just who you are inside. You are afraid of saying it because to you, they are dirty. There are things you want to hide. Mm -hmm. You don't want her to know. You don't want your children to lose respect for you. You know, you forget that both of you have become one. You don't have to be afraid of him. If you've actually developed love and trust, your love for him and your trust for him will make you to have faith in him. Even though this thing is going to upset him. But I know God will calm him or her down. So I have to share with him whatever it is. I have to share with him because I know he's going to bear it. Excepting maybe you know that what you want to share. Your wife, your spouse can't bear it. And then you will need the help of a counselor. You need the help of a man of God who can help you go through it. But to think that you continue to keep it as is your private life and then nothing happens. It's, it's not true. Something will happen. Something will happen. So let's try and develop trust. If you want to get married, try and get married to somebody that will love you. Somebody that will love you with, with all his heart. You know, from the depth of the person's heart, the person is willing to love you for who you are, the way you are, your nature. It doesn't matter. The person wants to love you for no reason. So that there won't be any reason to even end the love tomorrow. And the person will continue to build on the love and strengthen the love and develop trust. Because when love and trust is present, there is no private life. You discover that everything is open. You go out there, you spend money, you come back and tell her, Oh, I spent this amount of money the other day. I did this. In fact, I bought that property. I didn't even know. I was supposed to tell you. You come back and you open up. There's no private life in, in terms of salary. You are earning something. Your family, they don't even know what you earn. You say it's your private life because you don't want them to know. So they don't begin to make unnecessary demands. Mm. You know, you go borrow a loan, you keep borrowing money, borrowing money, borrowing money. They don't even know it's a, it's a loan you're, you're borrowing. And they are enjoying. The woman is making demands. Kids are making demands. They don't even know that this is a borrowed mom, money that, that just got from the bank, you know. And then when something happens to the person, the whole family is in trouble. If they had known, do you think they would have, like, encouraged you to go ahead? 
But you took it as a private life. You didn't discuss with them. Mm. You just went ahead. And today, everybody is suffering as a result of my, pri is my private life. Please, now, let us... Thank you, baby girl, for bringing up those sensitive areas, which is now making some questions to come up from Facebook. Let's, somebody said some people... I think it's always that I said that I say some people when you tell them they use it against, against you. you. Mm. I will I will I will respond to all of them at the same time. And uh, uh, Samaria, Samaria say it depends on the person. No, that's what she said. Now the second time I say you don't force people to know God. What if the person doesn't know God? Okay. So mm -hmm. because you looks like we're talking from the perspective of oh, those who know God. Now listen, mm -hmm. let me give attention to all of them right now. Singles, listen first. Then I come back to the marriage. My wife was saying something about those of you who are singles, and it's very important you listen. People, some of the people who talk about marriage, who bring people about to marriage and all the rest of them, don't even know so much, like who are trying to ex who are experiencing these days. If you are ready to, anytime, once you are saying, I, you want, you are preparing to say, I do. Because those of you who are singles now, it is better for you. Yeah, yes. Yeah, so yeah, before you say, I do, be sure that you know the person you are saying I do to. And that's one of the things I do in counseling now. I want to counsel people. Go back and know who you want to marry. Does he, do you know these people? Very important. Does he know you? Mm -hmm. he, he, he don't know the person you want to say I do to. And the person doesn't know you. Now go back and ask. If you are single here, you want to get married. I know some of you are here listening to me. And some of you are listening to Facebook. Please, go back and have a session. The, name, the title of that session is everything about your past and present and future. And everything about... Now, number two is, what is it that you hear about me tomorrow that will quit this marriage? Now, that will end. What is it that you hear you about me that, will, that you can't bear, that will make the marriage to end? Let me know it now. What is it? And let, also this, if I know this about you, so that you digest it from the beginning. Otherwise, this matter will still continue to repeat itself over and over again in your relationship. So... Those who are singles, listen to us, please. Those who are singles, listen to us. This message is even more important to you. It's because what is the person you use to tell the person they use it against you? Tell the person everything now. There's nothing about her. Everything. Let the person you are marrying know everything about you now. If the person knows everything about you now, when you get married to the person tomorrow, whatever you say about the person will not be a problem. Because I know I knew your past. So if you also made a mistake, you are making a mistake now, then I should, as I have forgiven your past, I can also, it's easier for me to also do what? Forgive your present and also, like her, I've forgiven her in the future. She has forgiven me in the future. So it doesn't matter what I do tomorrow. It doesn't matter what she does to tomorrow. Not it's not important. It's, what is important is so there's a forgiveness for the future. Like my brother Chid will always say, there's a forgiveness for the future. Mm -hmm. Not even for today. Ahead because I know the past. Because she knows the past. Definitely. So when people hide, like she brought up, it must repeat itself again. Now, number two is say it depends on the person. No, it doesn't depend on anybody. Let everybody, if you see people marry the persons that they're not even supposed to marry. That's even where these problems are coming from. Where if how on earth will you marry the person that it does that you can't share your life with? What are you going into marriage for? What is the definition of marriage? How, what marriage kind of is, will it doesn't matter the tribe. It doesn't matter the tribe. It doesn't matter the language. It doesn't matter. Marriage is not a tribal thing. Let me repeat my, my one of the things. Marriage is not a tribal thing. It's not a, religi a religious thing. Marriage is not a cultural thing. Marriage is of God. God started the, the, conducted the first marriage. So everything about marriage and the standard must be for, of God. Otherwise, it, won't, it doesn't matter the culture. It's another thing. So marriage is that two people become one. That's what marriage is. There's nothing else. That, I'm an electrical engineer, but by, by that's a field here. It's a, so, so there's a joint that is called in, in electrical. It's called marriage joint. It means that these two cables are joined together. Three cables that are joined together. Marriage is that two become one. There's nothing else. That's what marriage is. Two become one. That's any other thing is not marriage. Marriage is two becoming one. So it, you know how the person you are becoming one with. And then number one, say you don't force to know God on somebody. People. What if you want people to know God? Mm -hmm. What if the person doesn't know God? And that's what I said before. Now it's almost answering it too. Marriage is not even whether you know God or you do not know God. The only thing is that if you know God, it helps. Okay. Now the marriage. If the that, take marriage from the very first physical state um, um, level first, take it from the physical level. Take it from the physical level. 
make sure that the person you are entering marriage with, it doesn't matter the culture, because some people who are not even Christians are listening to us now. It doesn't even matter the it doesn't even matter the culture and the re- religion. Before ever you say I do to somebody, make sure you know the make person. Make sure you know the person. And you yourself, make sure the make person sure knows you. The person you. also knows you. You know why? Because the, that question, yeah. it, it used to be a fear. What yeah. if he knows about my past mm-hmm. and decides to leave me? Let me tell you something. Anybody that God has meant, created, designed, ordained to be your husband, mm-hmm. even if the person hears that ugly past that people are talking about, mm-hmm. that ugly past will even be the more reason why the person will want you. So this issue of being scared is when people don't even know they are God, when people don't even know who they are. Mm-hmm. If you feel you did, everybody makes mistake. Mm-hmm. I make mistake every day. And then you have made a mistake. God has forgiven you. And God is not like a man that he will, for, he will forgive and keeps remembering it. Mm-hmm. No, he has forgiven you and you should be able to forgive yourself. Mm-hmm. And then have the mindset that if you want to meet somebody, you want to talk about yourself. Mm-hmm. You're saying everything about yourself. If this person is for me, this person will stay. And if the person is not for you, the person will go. Mm-hmm. The door go. He, the door is open. He leaves, and another person will come. The right person will come, and when the right person comes for you, the right the right person will accept you for the very reason that one rejected you. So that somebody you you, you told somebody about your past, and the person left you. The person is not meant for you. Is not good enough mm. to be your your spouse. Take it that way. He is not. He or she is not good enough to be your spouse. You wait for the right person who will accept you for who you are. Because definitely, if you don't have the person, everything about you will still be known tomorrow. Mm. There is nothing hidden. From where I read in Mark four twenty two, you don't. You hide it for a short while. It's still gonna come into limelight. You know. Right, so you're going to read what that, have you then, gained from hiding? You read what she Our said. Our sister there. said mm-hmm. no secrecy in marriage. Mm-hmm. And then I have another comment here. She said. I have come to realize that the human life is created yeah, to, to be unpredictable. Mm-hmm. It takes only one who wants the same thing that you want to push that life together. Aside that. Because that if the person knows, yeah. knows what he wants, I know what I'm looking for in a person. No, yeah. And I have seen it. And then there is something like medically. Mm. Medically, when I was getting married, even the devil told me I'm not going to have kids. And I should forget about it. Yeah. Knowing how I love kids. Coming to tell me I'm not going to have kids. And there, there's also a medical issue that even should even give him that privilege of making that thing to happen. Mm. Do you get it? When I was to enter marriage. Mm. But today, the thing is that I, I said I'm going to have three. I'm saying I'm going to have two kids. You know, one boy, one girl. My husband came and said it's three he wants. And I said, okay, in the three, I'm going to have two boys and a girl. Is it not what I have today? Mm-hmm. I have it today. He doesn't have the power to stop me. If you believe he can stop you, he will stop you. But if you don't believe it, so it's not like, if I meet who I know, this is who I want to marry. I want to marry a God-fearing man. Hmm? This is who he is. Mm-hmm. And there is a flaw in his life. I, I don't mean like people with anger issues or some serious issues like, you know, that you know you can't go in, 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 in with. And God is saying, even if there's a serious issue like that, mm-hmm. I presented before God. Both of us are praying. Mm-hmm. And God says, go ahead and marry. He will prove himself. He will give me. I, I always ask for a proof. I don't know about you. Mm-hmm. I know a way I ask God to prove what is mine for me. Whatever I want. God has a way of convincing me. So if your own God convinces you that way, that this person is for you, go ahead. He can even change that circumstances. Mm-hmm. Even before the, mar- 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 the, date, the date of the wedding. He can even change it for you. No. So it's all about what you believe, what you want. You go for it. Some, now, somebody some, is saying, some men, hero, after telling them your them. past, they will start using it against you in marriage. Yeah, then the, another person I said here on, on, <laughs> on Zoom, mm. which I will bring it to of them together, and he says, on the flip side, mm. don't you think some things are better left unsaid, mm. especially if it will end up doing more harm mm. than good? Also, one English adage said, some, some things better are better left, left unsaid. unsaid. Now, she said again, even in the Bible, that's a supporting scripture. Mm. Even in the Bible, mm. Abraham didn't tell Sarah mm. before he took Isaac away mm. for a sacrifice. Mm-hmm. He didn't discuss it. Now, let me see. Chidi wrote on, underneath and said, best, best question of the whole marriage journey before it starts. What would you hear about mm-hmm. me that will make you quit this marriage? this marriage? That's That's... Chidi was just trying to repeat why I just said, with anybody I'm, any, any couple I'm cancelling now, 
I make sure I ask them this question. Go back, ask the person, what will you hear about me tomorrow, tomorrow. that I have done already mm -hmm. that will make you quit this relationship before ever the wedding? Now, after the wedding, what will you hear about me tomorrow? Mm -hmm. uh, then you will still quit the marriage. You will still leave me. What is it? What is that thing? You need to know it. No, tell me now. If we, I'm guilty of it, we'll discuss it now. If you still take me for it, good. But if go you're not ahead. taking me for it, you go. Yeah, marriage is not a do or die affair. It's not it, the way people Don't are Don't keep it, it because he will let her know. She will know. She will know. Now, so that's what she said. Now, so, and uh, God knew our sins ahead of time, yet he died, died for us. Me. It is scary because it looks like a license to sin. But that is what is called love. There is no private life in marriage open book. God bless you, beloved brothers. You have already done. I know okay. you have been. So now, the, now let's not hit these two. Let's not respond to these two okay, who said, one, one. oh, why should... You see, it's not better. There are some things that are better not, not said. said. Listen, listen, there is nothing that is better not said. Otherwise, there is no marriage. See, let's discuss this thing because we're in this. This is a clinic. It was God that brought us here, and our vision here is to tell you God's idea. See, I'm sure that one of the things with every time I also made that mistake in the time past before God brought me to revelation, brought me to knowledge, which I'm going to share with you now. Abraham was the first man that God met. After everything that had happened in the time past, that generation left God. Abraham was the first person that God met. Now, the question this person that this person who asked me this question. Now, let me also start asking you this question. Will you also want your husband to marry another wife? Will you also you yourself, if you're a woman, or a, will you also give your another lady to sleep with your husband? You know, if you're a man, will you give your wife to another person, uh, another uh, man to sleep with your wife? Abraham did all that. God didn't cut off his head. Why? Because God was using him to start a new thing. Now, let's now go back to what, who is God. Jesus is God. Jesus is Lord. He, what he said by himself is what I teach, and that is what should be. Listen, it doesn't matter the marriage teacher. It doesn't matter the Bible character. Whatever that Bible character said or did that is contrary to what Jesus did is wrong. Whatever the Bible, including Apostle Paul, whatever he thought mm -hmm. that is contrary to what Jesus thought is, is, is not, it doesn't matter. And no matter the G.O., no matter who said by experience, no experience, whatever the person is teaching, different from what Jesus thought, is wrong. What me, anywhere, and I can challenge you. If that thing is wrong, let's go back to Matthew chapter 19. What did Jesus teach? Jesus showed us what it should be. Go back to 19, baby girl. That's the answer to that person and to all of them who are saying it. Said, Jesus said, they are no longer two. For they are now one. For this question, they might live pa, 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 And this become one they flesh. And they, so they are no longer two. They are they one. No now, two, now, what was the reaction? The same reaction you are giving us now is the same reaction that the disciples say, if that is the case of a man who, who is married, then it's not even good to marry. Listen, when I... <laughs> Say, if this is the true state of a man who is married, that he shouldn't have any other thing outside his wife, a woman who is married, that she shouldn't have any other thing outside her husband, then it is not even good to marry. Listen, marriage is, and Jesus it's said, yeah, yes. it's true. It's true because the generation is like making marriage a do or die affair. Cultures are making it look like it's a do or die affair. Marriage is not a do or die affair. Jesus said something. Jesus said, it is what you said. He, uh, he, he received it and now said something. Now read, baby girl, read. He said, all men cannot receive All this men thing. cannot receive this thing we are saying here now. All men cannot receive this thing excepting whom to whom it is uh, given. Listen, that's the answer. It's not for everybody. Yeah. Marriage is not for everybody. everybody it's not for everybody. Marriage is for those who want to receive the principles of God, who wants to practice what God said it should be, what marriage should be. That is the people that is meant for. Jesus now gave an illustration. He said that some people we are uh, we are born eunuchs. Some other people we are made eunuchs by men. Why some made themselves eunuch for the kingdom of God? He said, 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 this thing, whosoever, everybody, I think that's the last thing Jesus said there. He said, the person who is meant for, let him receive it. Mm -hmm. Bro, sister, if you want to, my brother, my friend, guy, and lady, if you want to talk about marriage, that's why 
most of the people who are even teaching marriage don't even know what marriage is. And I still quote it and I still say it. Because marriage is God. God, God rather started from God. God was the one who made marriage. And that's why the standard of God for marriage is what works across every culture and instance. Just like, let me just tell you this. In every culture, to kill somebody is still evil. It doesn't matter the tradition. It doesn't matter the religion. It doesn't matter the culture. To kill is still evil. So anyhow, so this, some of these things are some things that God put by himself. In, and when you see almost every religion, every culture, it goes across. But here, in Marriage Liquid National, we tell you God's idea for marriage. That's what we bring to you. God's idea for marriage is also what Jesus said and what he thought and what his word said. He said, this thing is not for everybody. Now, let's now respond to those women. Who, ah, you say this thing, this man uses it against you. Or you say this thing, this woman uses, uses it against you. This is where the challenge is now. What it means is that this man, this woman, doesn't have awareness of what you yourself have awareness That's of. All. He needs help. So the person needs help. The person needs help. Do you see that? So you have a work to do. And that work is the work of bringing his heart unto the Lord. That is your principal assignment. Your principal assignment is not even whether you are telling him everything or telling her everything or not. The principal assignment is to bring that heart unto God. And then, these are people who are married because marriage already because that's where the problem is coming from. But please, if you are still a single person listening to us, you stand on, uh, you stand on a better pedestal, you stand a better chance. Let the, know the person you want to move into marriage, start marriage with now. Babe, somebody, somebody yeah, something the person here. is saying yeah. that there's no reason to tell your, your past to your spouse, okay. except if it will affect the future. Mm -hmm. That's I agree with you in that one. When it, it has to affect your future, mm -hmm. the future of your marriage, mm -hmm. it is very important he or she knows. Then health issues should be disclosed. Body count is inconsequential. Mm -hmm. That's what the person is saying. You know, remember that we are talking about what, what you will call private life that will affect your tomorrow. That will affect the tomorrow of your kids, mm -hmm. your wife. Mm -hmm. Even you, the wife you're getting married to. Innocent woman that will just marry you innocently without knowing anything about you. Mm -hmm. Only for her to enter your, your life and then enter into trouble. Many ladies, many men are passing through a lot because they just entered into a relationship. They don't even know the person. Mm -hmm. Because the person decided to keep my private life. Mm -hmm. This is my private life. And the lady didn't know. Because, or maybe ordinarily, if the person has known, the person wouldn't have come in. Yeah. Because now you know you don't have the strength. There are some battles you don't have the strength to fight. Yeah. Especially when you don't even know God. You prefer not to start going to that battle mm -hmm. Mm -hmm, than being a victim. That is what common sense, like they say, sense, will, give, will tell the person to do. You better not go than going and becoming a casualty. Mm. So in that case, if the person has known, the person wouldn't have come. So, but because it was concealed, the person came in and the thing swallowed the person. Yeah. So what, what we are saying is that those things, I'm not saying you are a single girl, you met a guy you want to marry, that you should begin to tell him, I dated this person, I dated this person. No, 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 that's not what we're saying. We're not saying you should give, be giving count of all the people that are your boyfriends, your girlfriends. I don't, we don't have time for that. That one, it doesn't make any sense to me. But what we are saying is that, you know the things you have done that can affect your tomorrow. That this lady hears it from the back and then it, it becomes a problem for her. Mm. Her heart is broken. She can no longer cope. The trust, you know, you can take 100 years to build love. Mm. You can take million years to build trust mm. and confidence, whatever it is. But just one second, it will come down. Mm. Everything is crashed. And then to rebuild it becomes hell for you. Mm. So what do you do in that instance? If you know what it is, you let the person know it. If I love you, you tell me and I want to go with you, good. If I don't want to go with you, then I am not the best for you. Your best will come. Because why it is a bone, uh, why Abraham, uh, sorry, uh, Adam, when he woke up and saw if he said, this is the bone of my bone, mm -hmm. the flesh of my flesh. Mm -hmm. there, is, there was a connection when he saw if. So if I see you, it doesn't matter what you have told me. Once that connection comes from the Lord, that this is this person. Mm -hmm. Deep down, there is a witness, an inner witness in my heart that this person is actually the one. Irrespective of what he has told me about his past. Then I have to go back to the, the Lord in prayer. Bringing that past before the Lord. Lord, can I cope with this? And he says, my daughter, your strength, my strength is sufficient for you. Then I go in, into the relationship. Thank you, you, you know? So yeah. that's, that's it. That's let what me, I said. Let me just add to what baby said. Yeah. 
you only talk about the parts parts that have that can affect the future but i will also advise you or let me say if you actually have a good relationship if you actually have a good relationship Everything that happened in your past, you'll be discussing. You, you, don't, you won't even know when you are discussing. You are discussing them. everything freely. Everything that have happened in my past, when we would talk, I say this thing happened thirty years ago. So you, you don't. Even, it's not that you say sit down. Let me tell you what I did when I was fifteen. No, as you as talk, not flows, naturally. It just know? flows. It just flows. You say everything. It naturally flows. So if I see that was when I was dating this, I say eh. It's only when you were dating this because what you are saying that's when I was dating this. So when you turn day, you are saying, say, oh, that's when I was dating this one. You already, it's not that you are, oh, I've dated five persons. Because let me tell you something. Why am I, my advice now is from what God has exposed me to. My advice is both the ones that have affected the future and the ones that will not affect the future. Be free to make them known before ever you enter marriage. And even when you are in marriage. The reason is because... The person, what if the person knows? What if the enemy packages it? The enemy of your enemy packages it in another way oh, to use it. and uses it against mm. you. Let him know. Let her know. That's my advice. What if the, your enemy, put this question behind you, packages it against you in another way? But if you, that then it becomes a problem for you to handle. But if you have already told, if you have already told the person before that this is what it is and this is how it is, I used to have, I, I was friending this person, you know, see the extent, see where it got, uh, what well, the thing ended. You also started talking about another thing. Whenever any enemy is coming around, whenever any enemy is coming around, there won't be any ground for that enemy to work against you. If I, Anytime I see some of those who school with her, those who school with her, she's, see, then we we'll know, we we'll know her on that time. We we'll know. So there is nothing you tell me. There is nothing. So let everything be known, both the ones that are critical and the ones you feel they are not critical. Another thing I want to say conclu conclusively so that we we'll pray today is what if you think it's not important. to you, it's not important, it's not but it's important to the person? To the person. Oh, how do you know what is important? How do you know what is important to, to the person? Mm. Because this is these two people who we, whom we are seeing here. Um, since I started seeing marriage, I've never seen this type of marriage before because what she likes and the things yeah. I like are not the same. Not the same what thing. she flows with and the things I flow with, mm. they are not the same. What makes her angry? Mm -hmm. If you do it to me from here to there, say I don't feel it. And what the, the things also that affect me, that can get me up, they don't affect her. So, do you know? Oh. Just not when she calls you and you didn't answer her, it's a problem. But if I call you from here to this, if you answer me, it's not a problem for me. So that's an example. So, so what what moves me and it's not what. So do you know what will make the person? So, so you mean you kept this thing? You know. So make it known. That's an advice. As the very best time for you, make it make it known unto him, unto her. Let's conclude by saying. There is no private life in a family. There's no private life in marriage. Don't even consider one. Don't consider one. If you are still single and you want to keep some privacy, please don't consider saying, I do. Mm -hmm. We pray. Father, thank you for today. Father, we pray that you help couples, those who are struggling, help them to come together. Father, we also pray for those who have some husbands and wives who don't who have not really come to the point of understanding who commit their hearts to you right now from this altar in agreement with those who are listening to us their wives their husbands we pray lord you that the heart of kings are in your hand you only you can help a man we pray lord that you help them yes. transform your hearts Change it, O oh God, for good. Lord, bring them to the point of understanding. Bring them to the point of having perfect knowledge of what is your will and purpose for them together. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Father, young ones who are living different lives, parents, husbands, they go for business trip, wives, workplace, say, oh, no, it's my, the kind of work I do, the demands this. No, Father, please, 
We pray for deliverance unto them all. Mm. Our kids, oh Lord, in this province, here and everywhere, in this in, in this nation, everywhere, we pray for deliverance, oh God. Yes. We pray, pray that the enemy will not have them. Yeah. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, yeah. we pray, Lord, that the your purpose of bringing the family to be, your pre- present, your program of bringing marriage to be, from this altar we declare, let that purpose, let that program. Come to pass. Let it be. Let the manifestation of the true peoples, the true marriage, the true family life, let it begin, O oh Lord. Amen. Thank you, Father, for answer. Mm. In Jesus' gracious name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Those who are, who are here, who are listening to us on Facebook, on so many where you are, but you've not actually had made peace with the Lord. You're not a follower of Jesus. Most of the things we said here today, Jesus has a way of helping you handle them. Like she said. We don't have all the time. Sometimes there are things we talk about our lives. Jesus will help you in many things. He will help you. And that's why I said at the initial time, can you just welcome him into your life? And I say, Jesus, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. I know you died for me. And I know you paid the price. I receive you today. I receive your salvation. I receive forgiveness of my sins and I receive the power of your Holy Spirit to be your own son, your own daughter. Thank you, Lord, for doing it for me. Amen. Father, we'll come, on behalf of the hosts of heaven, we receive the, these ones that have prayed that, that prayer right now. And we pray, Lord, that you give them the power of your Holy Spirit that from today henceforth, they will begin to live their lives as true, as true followers of the Lord Jesus. Thank you for every family that have attended this program. Those who watch later, we pray, Lord, that you bless them. Father, we declare that the enemy would have none of these marriages again. Amen. He will never operate there in their lives, in their husbands, wives, and in their kids, in their parents. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Father. Those who have contributed, bless them. Yes. And let their marriages be example to all that are around them. Blessed be your holy name, Lord. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Those who are around us here in Saskatoon and within, you can join us at Field House tomorrow, meeting room 3. Time is 10.30 a.m. Saskatchewan time. God bless you. Do have a happy weekend. Thank you. See you again.